Uh, we had to do a little battery change. First one from the slides. So the slides to the work tree with the stick across it. Just past Stick Beach, just past the Photographer's Rocks. And this is like the, uh, I just saw a boater take a leak over there. That's not kosher. Boaters, you're just supposed to go in your pants. I'm joking, but anyways. Uh, all right, so we're carrying, t carrying on downstream on today's hike. See how long this next battery lasts. Where I'm sitting is all underwater. If you look carefully downstream, you see where the brown is, the brown sort of mud skim on the rocks there. That's as high as up the river gets. Maybe it gets up a little bit higher, but I'll have to come here and actually verify it someday. Shouldn't be difficult. We're not very far from uh, Cucumber Falls. So Stick Beach, Party Beach, the big party beach. Photographer rocks, which have three or four of these incredible fossil rocks in there, big fossil rocks in there. And then those trees are just upriver from where Cucumber Fall, Cucumber Run comes in. And Cucumber Falls is back right over there. And that's the parking lot. So where I'm sitting is literally only a quick hike, half hour to get to here if you don't stop. But you're inevitably going to stop. Getting to Stick Beach usually is all people do, and then they go back to Cucumber. Today we started at the slides, which is way, way, way back there. And uh, if you look at the playlist for Ohio Pile with today's date, you'll see the whole five hours hike. And that's what we're going to do now. Here they are, the kayakers. They did the, the, the tightest pinch point of the river was right there. Some people capsized there. Some people will capsize further down there, but none of these kayakers will fall in. The guys in the boats won't even fall in. It's usually the people that are in those six person boats that one person or another sitting too close to the edge and gets bucked into the water. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna try to boogie for a ways here. And uh, see how long it takes us. Let's check the time from the wart tree. It's only 12.28, lunchtime. And see how long it takes us to get to High Bridge from here. And see if we can get there before this battery runs out. This is a five hour hike, but I usually take it super slow. Today we'll go a little faster than normal. My other videos catch all the beauty. This hike is, this video is also just to show how doable it is to do the whole hike and to do parts of the hike. If you wanna just do parts and get a taste of what it's like to hike along the river. This is a reliable stream. Footprints from today. Somebody's already gone down here and they've gone downriver. So maybe I don't think we'll catch them. We're way too slow compared to most hikers. I'm a plotter. Only if they only go partially the way, which most people do. Most people don't go the whole way. All way being to High Bridge. I suppose the super serious hikers go past High Bridge. I've not never done that.
Here's the first of the two semi impassable trees. They're not really impassable when the water's low. When the water's high, you have to hop over them. This next set of rocks, people who've hiked Ohio Pile in the recent years will remember some really great river wash trees came down here and lodged themselves over there. Oh look, we have a little whirlpool right there in the river. Let's get closer. Film the little whirlpool. What's interesting about the whirlpool parts of the river is when there's ice and snow, the whirlpool area will, what do you call it? Underneath the snow and ice be whirlpool, whirlpooling. And then as the snow and ice melt, you get these little circular Ice flows like little broken little pieces of an iceberg going right in a right in a circle. So, if one is trying to catch catch those exact moments, one one can catch these little ice river ice flows making little circles. Here you go. This big tree, which is not going anywhere, points to where there's a little bit of a river, what do you call it? Natural whirlpool. And I'll bet you, if you were into physics, you could probably model this flow of water and model a whirlpool with mat mathematical formulas. There's the whirlpool over there, and it looks like it sort of rotates in a, like a curve right in there. Which in itself is all due to, what do you call it, the underground, or the underwater currents and eddies. Here's the whirlpool right here. It's because of this interesting triangular rock, which is that perfect angle to launch little whirlpools there. <laughs> 